all right so let's continue now in the last part we were able to calculate the total amount of the cart as well as the total amount of individual items in the cart based upon their respective quantity so now we just need to work on uh, we just need to save the values and one other thing i later realized that the reason why this was not working is because the to fixed method it returns back a string so that's the reason why it was concatenating these two instead of adding them up but now that we are explicitly converting it into a number everything is working fine anyway let's continue so instead of returning back the json we are going to shift the entire code that we have somewhere around here after we get the database instance and we don't require the cart in such a way because we are already destructuring it right over here so now we just need to save the formatted cart instead of the original cart so let's place it in this way and also the total amount now because the key and the value are the same so we can just save it in such a way now within the confirm order we have to do uh we just need to get <clears throat> the total amount as well we don't have to do much with the cart because we it is already formatted so we now we just need to save the total amount as the last uh the last cell of the row you can say <clears throat> as that's what we have over here the last one so now and also in the slack channel message right over here so it's going to be total amount which would be this not in this way but like this so now let's actually give it a shot and everything should be working fine so let's quickly add few items we have everything up and running let's see so order should be placed so that is beautiful and now we should have the entry let's check it out so there we have the total amount and i just remembered one thing that the total amount that we are saving directly over here we should do the same thing of like two fixed with a value of 2 right because we don't want to kind of if the decimal value is too long then we can just trim it up to just for the first two figures or digits you can see so that's good and where we have the cart let's check it out that's it that's great so everything is working fine now uh we just need to confirm the order so let's copy this part let's get over here confirm order and let's confirm the order order successfully confirmed beautiful it should be deleted great and we should have the entry so that is beautiful everything is working in the expected way so that is great obviously if you want to add the dollar sign feel free to do that and let's actually do it mm, where we have this part we can do it uh around here like where we are saving the total amount yeah we can actually do that in such a way perfect so let me quickly test it out so i just created an order real quick placing it again boom that's done we should have the order this is perfect 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 and now we just need to get the entire thing confirm the order well it should work fine because we didn't change anything on the confirm order part whoops or link expired why is that forgot to copy the id i believe everything is working sweet nice so as you can see it has been added so that's great and i'm also like i just received the <clears throat> message in the slack channel uh, i know you cannot actually see it but anyway so everything is working perfectly fine everything is working great now what's left <clears throat> let me actually pop open the diagram because i think we have miss uh yep the email thing yeah so now we just need to send the confirmation link to the user's email 
and one other thing which i later realized that once the order once the user confirms the order like once the once the customer confirms the order we can send them a new mail with the order confirmation and details about the order as in what you ordered and what's the total amount so that would be like two mails that we'll have to send and let's do that and as as i said earlier that the secondary goal of this entire series is to use inexpensive stack so that's the reason why in order to send the mail we will be using gmail as in like we we're going to make use of a gmail like we will be using gmail with node mailer to send mails and we can do that for free i guess there is some sort of restriction as in like 500 mails per day something like that you can look it up and once if you find something make sure to comment down in the like in the comment section obviously anyway so let's continue with the rest of it the email thing in the next part and i hope you are enjoying this entire series as much as i am and i hope you have learned quite a lot while building this application from scratch all right so see you in the next one and again thank you for watching